Good morning, and welcome to St. Matthew's African Methodist Episcopal Church. We're so pleased that you decided to join us on this lovely 4th of July in 2021, and we pray that this message will serve as a blessing for your soul. Let's pray. Most precious and loving Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and for your many blessings. Please, God, take out anything that's not like you. Please let this message be one that touches the heart and the mind and the souls of everyone that at the sound of my, my voice, Lord. Please, God, take out anything that's not like you. Use me for your glory. And please, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, please, God, let it be acceptable in my sight, for you are my rock, my redeemer, my savior, my lord, my everything, the love of my life. To you, I give all glory and honor and praise, which only you are due. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, what would we do? Wanting you more each day. Show us your perfect way. For there is chapter, starting at the first verse, and we're going to be reading it to the 13th verse. <clears throat> Placing emphasis on Matthew, the 25th chapter, and the 10th verse. And it reads thusly, and I'm reading from the New um, English, I mean, NIV, the New International Version of the Bible. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take away, take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and tr uh, trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. And no, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, he said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not, do not know the day or the hour. And if I would put a title on this text, it is, Don't Let Your Oil Run Out. Don't Let Your Oil Run Out. Placing emphasis on Matthew the 25th chapter and the 10th verse. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. The door was shut. Mother Teresa said, how does a lamp burn? Through the continuous input of small drops of oil. If the drops of oil run out, the light of the lamp will cease. What are these drops of oil in our lamp? They are the small things of daily life, faithfulness, 
small words of kindness and being thoughtful of others. It's a certain look, a special word, or it's a particular way that we carry ourselves. These are the true drops of oil that keep our spiritual life burning like a living flame. So don't let your oil run out. In the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus tells a story about a party of virgins, perhaps bridesmaids or torchbearers, for a procession chosen to participate in a wedding. Each of the ten virgins is carrying a lamp or a torch as they await the coming of the bridegroom, which they expect sometime during the night. Five of the virgins are wise and have brought oil for their lamps. Five are foolish and have only brought their lamps. At midnight, all the virgins hear the call to come out to meet the bridegroom. Realizing that their lamps have gone out, the foolish virgins, virgins ask the wise virgin, virgins want for their oil, but they refuse, saying that there will certainly not be enough for them to share. While the foolish virgins are away trying to get more oil, the bridegroom arrives. The wise virgins then accompany him to the celebration and the others arrive too late and are excluded. The parable of the ten virgins emphasizes that all believers must constantly reflect upon their own spiritual condition in preparation of Christ's return at an unknown and unexpected time. We must preserve or persevere in our faith so that when the day and hour arrives, we will be ready whenever he arrives so that we can accompany him back to heaven. Failure to be in a personal relationship with Jesus when he returns means being excluded from his presence and the kingdom, or in other words, left behind. What differentiates the foolish from the wise at this most crucial time? is the failure of the foolish to recognize that Jesus' return will come at any unexpected time. And at a time when there will be not be um, unmistakable or specific observable signs that will notify us that, it's, that he is soon to come. May God allow those who have eyes to see, let them see, in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous Jesus the Christ. Christ indicates here in Luke the 18th chapter and the 8th verse that a large portion of the church will be unprepared at the time of his return. And Christ makes it clear that he is not going to wait for all churches to be prepared for his coming. If you're not ready, you're not going to be ready. So get ready. Notice in our passage of scripture that all the virgins, the virgins, both faithful and unfaithful, were taken by surprise at the bridegroom's coming. This suggests that the parable of the ten virgins applies to the believers who are living before the tribulation and those who will have adequate signs preceding Christ's return at the end of the tribulation. Matthew, the 24th chapter, and the 21st verse references the great tribulation, saying, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Let's go back to Matthew, the 24th chapter, starting at the second verse and ending at the 14th verse, where Jesus talks to his disciples about the signs of the end of the age. Jesus says, do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Then the disciples ask him to tell them when this will happen and what the signs will be upon his return and the end of the age. And Jesus said in verse four, Watch out, the 
that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but, to, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then in verse 9, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At the time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. In verse, verses 4 to through 14, Jesus gives the signs that will characterize the whole course of the last days that will intensify as the end draws nearer. False prophets and religious compromisers within the visible church will increase and deceive many. The increase of wars, famines, and earthquakes will be the beginning of birth pains of a new messianic age. And the end draws near, the persecution of God's people will become more severe. And many will forsake their loyalty to Christ. Have mercy on us, Lord. Violence, crime, and disregard for God's law will increase rapidly. And natural love and family affection will decrease. Have mercy on us, Lord. But in spite of this intensification of trouble, the gospel will be preached in the whole world. Praise his holy name. I'm definitely not the one who desires to preach doom and gloom. But it is my responsibility as God's mouthpiece to warn you and of what is soon to come. This pandemic, the increase of police brutality, brutality, the increase of social inequality, earthquakes and natural disasters, violence and crime, and the increase of great gain representation in Lansing alone has made our once safe and secure community one that we don't even recognize anymore. Have mercy, Jesus. So let us, those of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear, take heed to what God is revealing to us today. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, and the fourth verse, Jesus, in a series of illustrations, stresses the requirement of faithfulness and the watchfulness until his return. The parable of the ten virgins stresses the necessity of perseverance and faith and spiritual preparedness because of the danger of Christ's coming at an unforeseeable time. The oil in the parable represents true faith and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit through living a righteous life. We would have never imagined in our wildest dreams that the entire universe will be shut down due to a pandemic. I certainly didn't. And although there are some to this day who do not believe in such things, most of us know just how real the traumatic experience has been, especially those of us who have lost loved ones or know someone who has lost a loved one because of this most deadly disease. The Bible and many prophets warn us that we should always be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. As far back as John the Baptist, he warned everyone who can hear his voice to repent for the kingdom of God is near, meaning that the day of judgment is soon to come, so you better be ready. Ready for what, you might ask? We all must make sure 
that we are in right standing with God. So what does that mean, you might ask? That means that if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you will be lost and left behind when he comes back, period. The definition of ready means to be prepared for immediate action or use. So if Jesus were to come this afternoon, would you be ready when he came? Meaning, are your hearts, your bodies, your souls, your minds operating in such a way that they will be pleasing to God? Or are we still telling ourselves that we have plenty of time to get ourselves together? Being ready and living a righteous life isn't like deciding when you're going to take the initiative to go on a diet to lose weight. Being ready and living a righteous life is a matter of life or death. It's like making sure that your affairs are in order before you die. It's like making sure that you have enough money saved in order to retire. It's like making sure that your parachute is working before you jump out of a plane. And as Jesus told his disciples, it is similar to ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish, who were waiting for the bridegroom to come. The five who were wise came prepared with extra oil for the last. Just in case the oil ran out. But the five who were foolish only came with their last. And as the hour grew later, the, their last became, began to go out and they asked the wise virgins for some of their oil. And they told them to go buy their own oil for themselves. But when they returned, the bridegroom had already came. And when they pounded on the door to, let, to be let in, he said, I don't know you. And shut the door. Can you imagine what that would feel like? I would hope that you don't want to know what that would feel like. So get ready or be ready. Can you imagine that in our state of procrastination, in our foolishness, thinking that we will still have time to get it together, that Jesus comes and we're not ready? Imagine him coming for those who are. And he leaves you pounding on the door saying, Jesus, Jesus, let me in, please, let me in. And he slightly opens the door to tell you that he doesn't know who you are. And he slams the door in your face. Wouldn't that leave you in a state of hopelessness, grief, and despair? The oil represents God's anointing. And the lamp represents God's Holy Spirit, which provides guidance and direction. Jesus is the bridegroom. And we represent the ten virgins. But what's most important in this scenario, are you the one of the wise virgins? Or are you one of the foolish ones? T.D. Jake always said, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. Are you ready? Have mercy, Jesus. And as Mother Teresa said, there are small things of daily life. Faithfulness. Small words of kindness. And being thoughtful of others. It's a certain look. A special word. Or it's a particular way that we carry ourselves. These are the true drops of oil to keep our spiritual life burning like a living flame. So I ask you, ask yourself the question, am I living a righteous life that is pleasing to God so that his anointing can forever Overflowing my life, providing me with an outpouring of his Holy Spirit that will protect me, that will direct me, that will lead me and guide me 
So, beloved, please don't let your oil run out. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, there, there's no other time. Tomorrow is not promised. Some people take that statement, tomorrow isn't promised. To live any kind of way now, live for today, do what you want to do. No, the time grows near for Jesus to come back. And you don't want to be that one person, that foolish person. When Jesus shuts the door and leaves you behind. We'll speak next week more on what happens when he closes that door. And those of us who know him, have received him, have relationship with him, will be caught up in the rapture in all of the years of tribulation that you will be going through. Before the judgment day, nobody wants to be left behind, believe me. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Lord, do this today. Say these words with me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. But I'm a sinner saved by grace. Save me, Lord, today. Forgive me of my sin. Take out anything that's not like you. So I can be used for your glory. Please, God, don't leave me behind. Have mercy, Jesus. I want to follow you. I don't want my oil to run out. I want to keep it over, ever overflowing in your righteousness. Come into my heart. Save me. So now I believe and I receive in Jesus' name that I am saved. Amen. If you said that prayer, beloved, please inbox me and let me know because the heavens are rejoicing. Because you made the most important decision of your life. If you're in a backslidden state and you need to come back home, this is the day to do it. Today is your day. Hallelujah. Jesus is waiting with open arms to receive you back home. And if you're in need of a church home, please let me know. And you can become part of this wonderful family at St. Matthew AME Church. And we can receive you and we will receive you and help you have all the rights and benefits of a member of this wonderful congregation, this wonderful family. Please inbox me and let me know. But at this time, now, we will get ready for our Holy Communion. Today is our first Sunday, our Holy Communion. Please get your juice, your water, your your bread or your cracker, whatever you'd like to use in representation of the body of Christ and his shed blood, please do that right now. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. 
juice at this time as we partake in our Holy Communion. You that truly and earnestly repent of your sin and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking hereafter in his holy ways, draw near with faith to receive the holy sacrament and make your humble confession to Almighty God in the presence of his church, meekly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and our heart is sorry, sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins. To all them that have mercy, have that with hearty repentance and true faith unto you, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse our thoughts and our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very neat and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. We do not presume to come to this, your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and him in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until it's coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these 
your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son and our, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this and remember to me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this, and as often as you drink it, and remember to me. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The cup. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is shed for you for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Hallelujah. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, we who trespass against thee. Lead us not into temptation, for thou is thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, singing glory, hallelujah, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. If you enjoyed this message and it blessed your soul, I pray that you will go to our website, St. Matthew AME Church, um, Lansing.org, and that you will pick, click on that donate button. We would truly appreciate your love gifts, your offerings, your tithes. We'd love for you to become a part of this ministry. You can join. Just inbox me and let me know. Those of you that have asked for prayers, please know that I sincerely read those messages and I pray for you and your family and whatever your state of condition is. So make sure that you let me know. We don't know. We can't help you if you don't let us know. And all